We have some really cool new products from Raspberry Pi today here in the Maker Lab at Micro Center. Let's jump right into it. We've got the all new 15 inch Raspberry Pi portable monitor. This thing is awesome and there's gonna be a million use cases for it beyond just hooking up to the all brand new Raspberry Pi 500. This now has the guts of a Raspberry Pi 5, including eight gigabytes of RAM. This is super exciting. If you like the Pi 400 and its form factor, they've done it even better once again. What I wanna talk about today is these two products, the potential use cases, and why you probably should get to your local micro center and pick one up. Let's get started. All right, so let's talk about the Pi 500. This board, or this keyboard computer, is coming in at $89.99 for the unit only. Now that unit comes with a 32 gigabyte SD card with Bookworm already pre-installed. So you'll be able to take it out of the box, insert the SD card, hook it up to the mouse, keyboard, monitor, and power supply that you already have, and you're off to the races running Raspberry Pi OS. For $119.99, you can grab the Pi 500 kit. That will include the Pi 500 itself, HDMI to micro HDMI Raspberry Pi cable. You'll also get the official Raspberry Pi power supply coming in at 27 watts. You will get a official Raspberry Pi mouse like we have here. You'll also get their amazing getting started book. So if you've ever seen any of their books, they're really great ways to get into the Raspberry Pi ecosystem. So you get that as well in the kit at $119.99. Let's talk specs. All right, so the Raspberry Pi 500 comes with a quad-core Broadcom ARM Cortex-A76 processor. This is the same kind of processor or the same processor that you're going to see in the Raspberry Pi 5 Standard Edition. This version of the Raspberry Pi 5 500 uh, comes with eight gigabytes of RAM. So just like the top tier model of the Raspberry Pi 5, you're gonna get all of that horsepower from that eight gigabytes of RAM. Now they don't skimp on the ports either on this keyboard because you still get the two micro HDMI outputs so you can do dual monitors. And with that, you can do up to 4K 60 frames per second. You also still get the two USB 3.0 ports and one USB 2.0 port. They did have to sacrifice one port for the keyboard, which you'd probably plug in anyways. You do get the 40 pin GPIO and it comes with a nice rubber dust cover. And then finally, you get the ethernet jack at a full gigabit. One last cool feature of this is that if you are putting this in a public space and you wanna lock it down, they've got the Kensington lock port built in. Really great feature, especially for education. All right, and as you would expect for this generation of Raspberry Pi with connectivity, you've got Wi-Fi, B, G, N, and A, C. You've also got Bluetooth 5.0, which is great for using wireless mice and keyboards to free up more USB ports. The power is as you would expect and takes five volts over a USB-C port. And finally, it is a 78 key compact keyboard. What's cool about this is that you could literally grab this and go with it. If you've got a monitor somewhere or you happen to have a Raspberry Pi monitor with you, you have basically got an all-in-one computing solution on the go. It's very portable, can be thrown into a backpack, no problem. I think it would be great for an arcade setup to host underneath the control panel. There's a million other uses uh, that have already been proven amazing for this. If you just need a small terminal or computer at home for general purpose computing, this setup could be your ticket. Let's talk price of the monitor. So this 15.6 inch panel, complete with speakers and a really adjustable stand, comes in at $99.99, so just under 100 bucks. I think that's a pretty good price for a portable monitor from Raspberry Pi and with all the features it has. So let's talk about them a little bit. The resolution of the monitor comes in at 1920 by 1080p or full HD. There's a full-size HDMI port on the back, a quarter-inch audio jack out, stereo audio out, but you also do have these two speakers right here. And then you also have a contrast up and down button on the back. Now, the way they designed these buttons make it super easy to actuate and use. 
A lot of times when you have a monitor, you've got to do a bit of menu diving to adjust the volume or the contrast or the brightness. Uh, here, it's basically two sets of up and down switches for brightness and for sound, and then a single button for power. So it makes it really easy. You don't have to go into a whole bunch of different menus. With this monitor, you can actually power it off of a Raspberry Pi 5, or in this case, the Pi 500's USB 3.0 port. That's really cool because that's one less power cable you have to carry around with you. Now you do need USB-A to USB-C in order to make that happen. But again, that's way better than having to find another place to plug something in if you're down to one outlet. So if you want full brightness coming out of this monitor, you'll want to power it with its own power supply. We recommend the USB-C power supply by Raspberry Pi at 27 watts. We think this makes a great partner for this display. Although again, you don't have to use it. You can plug it directly into the Raspberry Pi itself. Again, recommending on that USB 3.0 port. And you wanna make sure you have a good power supply on your Raspberry Pi as well, such as the USB-C 27 watt power supply from Raspberry Pi. First, let's take a look at this kickstand. This kickstand doesn't just go back a few degrees, but will rotate a full 180 degrees until it's touching the back of the monitor and makes it completely flush. Now, the cool thing about that is, if you look really closely at the back, you'll see these two notches cut out in the back of the kickstand. Now, that will allow you to mount it to a wall just as if you were mounting a picture frame. I can only imagine a number of uses that this would be handy for in that regard. So that's a really cool feature that unless you're looking, you might miss. The other cool feature that they added, which they didn't have to, was visa mount screws. So your standard visa mount, there's four screw holes here. And while sure, you could mount that to any number of visa mount accessories or stands, I think the better question is, what other things could you mount to the monitor instead of the other way around? Stay tuned for more on that. Let's take a look at the ports. As mentioned before, we have the quarter inch stereo output jack. You can listen via either headphones or powered speakers, preferably, and then a full size HDMI port. And then finally, you've got that five volt USB-C power port, which again, you can power either from the Pi 500 itself or from its own power supply. Two last features worth noting are the pass-through in the kickstand itself. This can help tremendously with cable management and the pass-through on the monitor itself, so you can go directly into the Raspberry Pi 500, such as you see here. And then on the bottom of the Pi monitor, you have these nice rubber feet. Now, these rubber feet help the monitor from not sliding around on a table. So super handy there as well. For roughly under $250 or around $220, we think this is really cool and stay tuned for future videos where we're going to explore more potential use cases of this portable nature now of the Raspberry Pi. But before we do that, I think we're going to have some fun using the Pi and using the monitor, even for things that aren't necessarily Pi related. So let's get started. We're really excited about the monitor because there's other uses for this, whether it's to plug into your laptop as an external monitor, or in this case, we've got it plugged into a Nintendo Switch. Now, what's fun about this is this is my launch day switch from back in, I think, 2017, and it's still kicking, and I don't even have any left drift on the Joy-Con controllers, but we've got it hooked up to the HDMI input on the monitor. We've got it powered through this portable dock, and we've got it running Mario Kart. Unfortunately, I just came in third, so, going to have to practice. But what's cool about this is because, again, it's powered by USB-C, you could take this on the road or take it portably to like a Switch meetup or have it in the car so you can play Switch on the go, not while you're driving. Um, and then one other thing we added to this setup here are these Pebble speakers from Creative. Uh, they run over the audio output jack on the back of the monitor. So they take the audio from the HDMI cable all the way up into the monitor and then audio out here, and they can be powered off of USB as well. So really cool setup if you wanna use that external audio port and get a little bit more volume than the built-in internal speakers. All right, so we've got our next setup right here in front of me. This I'm calling the Pi 500 productivity setup. 
And what we've got going on is we've got two monitors, including the Raspberry Pi 15.6 inch monitor plugged in to the micro HDMI ports on the Pi 500. What's cool about that is that you can arrange these monitors to be wherever they're gonna sit so that you can go from one to the other, just like you would on any other multiple monitor setup. Now, we've got a couple of things running here to show that it can handle a good bit. So we've got a browser window over here. I think it's running Chromium uh, and it's just got a website up. And what were we searching for on there? We were searching for some code. Uh, and then we've got the actual code in the Thonny integrated develop environment so we can program our circuit python micro python what have you and on this screen we've got a google sheet up with a bunch of songs that i like to play in various orders and then we've got an email open on a firefox browser so we've got a lot kind of going on here that we can do with this pi 500 two monitors connected to the mouse and the all new raspberry pi usb hub so if you need additional ports, you can always add on this USB 3.0 hub. It's a USB-A port. USB 3.0, it gives you four more USB 3.0s. And if you need additional power for those accessories, there's a five volt USB-C input on the side of the USB hub as well. So if you're gonna power a number of external devices such as hard drives, or even let's say these speakers, uh, you may want to add additional power to this. All right, so we've got our third use case or setup here, and that's plugging into an iOS device. I think it's really cool that you could have your screen mirrored, uh, or I think on the new M4 iPads, you could have it uh, extended even um, to this monitor. So uh, beyond even just the Raspberry Pi ecosystem, there are so many awesome use cases for this. Uh, I like to draw in uh, procreate so for me having a slightly larger monitor to look up and check in on things too uh, is kind of fun and I can kind of get an idea of how things look a little bit closer up there I'm seeing it starting to pixelate but that's okay because the files only intended for sketching so yeah that's our third use case. So it is December 9th, the year 2024, and that means today is launch day for these products. So make sure to check the links down below for your store and availability. We can't wait to see what you do with your Pi 500 and the all new Pi monitor. Make sure to leave comments down below with your ideas of what these will be great for or what you might use it for. And we'll see you next time in the Maker Lab at Micro Center.